Go ahead, please. Yeah. So, hi. Uh, we have talked a lot today. Um, probably you all want to get over with it. Uh, so, something small uh, about actually using the operating systems that we, uh, that we develop. So, I want to talk today about a project called Foreman, which is quite a nice thing that can be used to actually manage the operating system. Uh, let's start from who is here. So, my name is Shimon. I, uh, I'm a principal software engineer uh, at Red Hat. Uh, I work on Foreman for the last nine years. Um, and thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Sorry. Uh, yeah, and I'm a maintainer of one of uh, Foreman plugins, uh, specifically the RH Cloud plugin. I can talk about it a lot. I wouldn't do that, at least not in a half an hour that I have here. Sorry, guys, probably uh, your time was cut off because of this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, what is Foreman? So, it's a tool actually to manage uh, the provisioning and the configuration management and the monitor, the configuration monitoring of your data centers. So, Foreman knows how to provision on bare metals, it knows how to provision on virtual servers uh, and on cloud instances. About configuration management, it allows you to configure, to use any configuration management tool you would like to. Uh, Puppet, Salt, Ansible, Everything goes, and for configuration monitoring, we uh, give some uh, nice concepts uh, that you could actually use. You have facts, you have reports, there are status, statuses for your machines, and a dashboard that actually um, gives all that information on a single screen. Uh, all of this stuff is actually, uh, made with plugins, so if it's not in Foreman right now, you can write a plugin and it will be there. Um, so let's start with the first thing, the provisioning. So first of all, you have to define three things. You have to define where do you want that host be, um, be provisioned. Would it be a bare metal? Would it be a specific uh, AWS instance? Or would it be a, a new machine that you want to spin uh, on your VMware? Then you have to specify what exactly do you want to provision? Which operating system? Which interfaces? Uh, Macs, IPs, domains, whatever uh, things about the interfaces you want to, uh, to tell. Then you want to specify the configuration. You're not deploying a server just to be there. You probably want it to do something. So uh, you want to specify which uh, configuration do you want on that server deployed. Um, it can be Puppet classes if you're using Puppet. It could be Ansible roles. Everything goes. And Maybe you have some additional parameters that you want to actually uh, specify for that specific machine. There is a concept of parameters inside Foreman. You can use those uh, all around the place. Quite nice thing to uh, customize your deployments. And the third thing uh, that you want to specify is how do you want to provision it? So you have uh, provisioning templates, which are basically templates for files that are used by uh, by the provisioning systems like uh, uh, Anaconda, where you have the kickstart files, all other things like that uh, for different operating systems. You have to specify the installation media, where the operating system will come from, and you have to specify the network boot environment like Pixie or uh, whatever uh, you are using. There are two things that uh, make your life easier 
uh, in the provisioning world, you have, you basically you don't need foreman if you are provisioning a single server. It's easy. But if you have a lot of those, you probably want to have some automation for that. And you don't want to specify uh, all of this list for each one of your servers. So you can group those into host groups. You can specify that you have a host group uh, and it will actually inherit all the properties from there. Another option, you don't always want to uh, start from scratch. You don't want to sp uh, start from specifying things in Foreman and actually writing everything down. You are installing Foreman in, in an existing environment and then you just want to say, okay, I still want that host that I already have and it works and it does whatever it needs to be doing. I want to manage it using Foreman from now on. So I'll use host registration where I'll just punch in a magic command and it will register itself into the Foreman machine and you will see it's just one of your hosts. So the next step is configuration, is configuration management. Uh, Foreman actually uh, works with, with a lot of configuration management systems. There are plugins for a lot of those. I have selected some that I know that are working, but there are probably more than that. So we have Puppet, where, we, uh, where Foreman is actually used as ENC, for those who are uh, familiar with Puppet, um, external node classifier. Uh, it means that actually Foreman tells Puppet what uh, the host uh, you should be doing. Uh, we manage classes for uh, Puppet. For Ansible, uh, you can specify the roles. So basically you would do the, uh, the connection between your hosts and roles uh, using your foreman. Uh, for salt, you can specify the grains. It's working the same way for salt too. So this is how uh, actual, an actual host looks like uh, when you specify the uh, puppet. Again, you have host groups, you have uh, parameters that you can specify, both puppet class parameters and global parameters for the host, and config groups, which are again uh, a set of uh, grouping that allows you to specify things once and having it run uh, on multiple machines. Then you have um, configuration monitoring. Uh, Foreman doesn't allow you to, to, to see how much CPU the machine is consuming right now or how many free memory do you have right now. It's not its goal and it wouldn't be that good at doing it. Uh, but it do allows you to see uh, facts uh, about your operating system. So why, what operating system is installed, what packages are installed there, all around the place. Um, there is a concept of reports. Uh, Puppet knows how to report things. Uh, other systems know how to report. And even we, ha we have implemented even um, um, open SCAP reports, which are uh, security audits on your hosts. So you can run a security audit on your host. It will actually report to, to Foreman and you will see it as a report or as a host status. You can see that uh, as part of your main screen. So you will see if your host is doing great or something is wrong with it and you should actually do something about it. Uh, all of this is can be uh, accessed from a dashboard. So you have a single screen where you see kind of a welcome screen where you can see what's going on with your uh, data center without uh, the need to actually dig uh, into a lot of commands or um, stuff. All of that has a, has a lot of common features that are um, actually across the board, across all the screens in Foreman. 
So you have a scoped search, which is a context, uh, contextful search where you can uh, use, first of all, you can use different operators, and second of all, uh, the search itself understands what are you trying to search, so uh, it knows which fields uh, to actually to suggest you, uh, and what operators are relevant for it. You have a concept of templates. Um, so basically, under the hood, we are talking with, uh, with existing systems, with existing files. So uh, the users can actually write themselves the templates that will be used by foreman to provision uh, later on. Uh, the templating language is ERB, so the, the whole project is written in Ruby, so the templating language is ERB, so people who are familiar with Ruby would find it quite uh, easy to understand. Um, and again, plugins. Plugins are all over the place. Uh, plugins can extend any one of the screens that, are, that exist in Foreman. Uh, they can do a lot, uh, a lot more. I'll skim those um, in a minute. So how uh, how it looks like under the hood? So you have the Foreman uh, application. It's a Rails application, Ruby on Rails. That that's the uh, base of it. The front end is uh, based on React mainly. We still have some. Uh, uh, still have some legacy uh, UI, but mainly it's React. Uh, and there are plugins, which are Rails, uh, uh, Rails engines, basically, uh, which, are, which, give, uh, which have all the access to all uh, internal objects, so they can interact with them however they like. Uh, the plugins can actually uh, interact also with the UI quite an elegant thing to have. Besides that, there is a smart proxy. Smart proxy is, a, is an agent that uh, has a couple of roles. Uh, so first of all, it's a Sinatra plus Ruby application. It also has a lot of plugins. The role of smart proxy is actually accessing uh, different services that exist uh, in your data center. So it, the smart proxy actually accesses the DNS uh, service, the DHCP service. Uh, it accesses the config management services, like it actually talks to Puppet server to do stuff, and so on and so on. So basically what happens is Foreman will talk to smart proxy and smart proxy will uh, talk uh, to the system. This, this is quite important, especially when, uh, because you can, uh, deploy uh, smart proxies on a sep on a disconnected networks and then you have a very small and well-defined interface between the foreman server and the smart proxy instead of having a lot of stuff open in on your firewall um, well that's uh, the slide that actually talks about smart proxy in uh, in details uh, so yeah, um, I have actually talked most of it. Um, and as I have said, it's also pluggable. So uh, basically for, if there is a plugin that uh, allows Foreman to talk to a separate system, probably there is a, a second plugin for Smart Proxy that will allow the access to that system too. The installation process, we have Foreman installer. Uh, it's based on Puppet, so we do manage Puppet classes that actually do the installation process uh, internally. Um, we have repositories for CentOS and Fedora. We have repositories for Debian and Ubuntu. Um, out of the box, it, games, it comes with the Defaults, some of us call it sane. Uh, so you could try it just out, the, uh, just out of the box. Um, 
And the installer actually knows how to install the foreman itself. It knows how to install smart proxy. So the same uh, installer, you can run it to install only a smart proxy if you need that in, on your separate network. Um, it knows how to configure the management services to actually to talk to smart proxies and to foreman. And it knows how to install the plugins. We have a full API. It's a RESTful API, so all the objects that you can see on the UI have their representation on the API. You can access it uh, and do whatever you want with uh, the API, uh, via the API, actually. Uh, everything is covered, so everything you have on the UI, you have it on the API. And it's documented. We have documentation actually deployed as part of Foreman, so whatever your, your Foreman server uh, link is, slash API doc, and you are there. Uh, and we have, uh, we have it on the Foreman.org, so even if you don't have your Foreman installed, you can still access the um, uh, documentation. And we have a command line for it. So it is on par with the UI. Most of, um, most of the things are in the command line uh, as well. Uh, you, it is authenticated, so one thing that I didn't talk in the common features, we do have RBAC model implemented. So uh, you, uh, you can define users. Users can have access to certain resources in Foreman, not uh, all resources have to be uh, accessed by all of the users. The same goes for uh, uh, for the uh, CLI. It's also uh, authenticated, which means uh, the same rules uh, that apply to the UI apply to the uh, command line and the API. And the output can can be customized basically to whatever uh, is convenient uh, for the people. Uh, it can be a CSV, it can be YAML, it can be JSON, whatever you like. So uh, the API and the CLI are great tools for automation. So anything that, uh, if you want to do some automation uh, based on Foreman, basically you can do it through uh, scripting with uh, those tools. Now about plugins, uh, what we um, I, what we do have, and this is just a small list of things that I have cherry picked out of it. There are much more of, of plugins. So we have Catello plugin, which is a huge plugin that is talking about content management. I was talking about uh, uh, provisioning and configuration which are there by default for Foreman, but uh, we know how to manage content. Uh, and that's done by Catello. Uh, we have a remote execution plugin that actually allows uh, to execute commands on hosts uh, using schedule, uh, scheduler, using whatever you like. So you could execute commands from a single UI from remote execution. Uh, you have the discovery plugin. I was talking about uh, the first step where you have to describe your host, but uh, that's not always the case. There are cases where you want to have a bunch of hardware actually connected to your network, plugged in, and then uh, you, want them, uh, you want it to actually be available to you as soon as possible. So you have a discovery plugin that actually deploys a small image on your network, it will actually uh, be the one that will be booted first and will report about the host to Foreman and Foreman will, uh, will provision that host according to the rules that you have set before. You have a Puppet plugin, which is a plugin that allows uh, configuration management with Puppet. We have Salt. Uh, and Ansible plugins that actually uh, connect the, uh, both Salt and uh, Ansible to, uh, to Foreman. 
as I have talked, uh, as I have told already, uh, we can provision on many compute resources. We can provision on bare metals. We can provision on uh, vir uh, virtual environments like VMware. We also can provision on uh, uh, on cloud instances. So, uh, for example, there is uh, an Azure plugin that actually allows you to run VMs on Azure. Yes, there are plugins for GCP and for AWS. Um, there is an open Scott plugin that I have mentioned uh, a bit. Um, it's a plugin that allows to run open SCAP reports uh, on hosts, which means from a single pane of view, you can see, uh, you can run the open SCAP scan and it will actually report uh, the state of, uh, uh, of the host as far as security goes. And there is an RH Cloud plugin that I actually maintain. Uh, I had to put it on, on the slide, of course. Um, a, it allows Foreman to consume Red Hat insights from the uh, Red Hat UI. Uh, and basically the same screen on Foreman will enable you to uh, have all the cloud features uh, from insights. Okay, so in case you want some of it, uh, the foreman.org, that's the address, uh, that's the QR code. Um, you can find us on the foreman uh, and the foreman dev on matrix.org. And uh, we have a huge forum, community, the foreman.org. You can ask questions, tell us about your stories, and whatever you want there. Um, we will be here uh, for FOSDEM and Config Management Camp. At Config Management Camp, you will hear a lot more about Foreman, as you can see. Uh, we have a booth, booth on FOSDEM, so you are more than welcome to actually uh, get to us and uh, talk to us there. So yeah, that's what I had about Foreman. Questions, something? Hi, uh, great talk. Um, I'm wondering about one thing. Like uh, you mentioned earlier that uh, uh, Foreman itself is configured using, um, using oh God, um, Puppet. Yes. Uh, is that basically, so if you want to use a different plugin to manage the rest of your system, like say Salt or Ansible, do you still need Puppet around to manage Foreman itself? No, you don't. You, you can uninstall the Puppet, Puppet plugin. You can actually select not to install the Puppet plugin and install Salt instead, for example. So you don't need Puppet to keep Foreman itself uh, updated after the initial installation? No, 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 you don't, oh, you cool. don't need, need Puppet. Um, um, our installer is based on Puppet, that's true, uh, but uh, it, it, doesn't, um, it doesn't matter much. Like, it uses Puppet under the hood, but you will not see it on your system. I think we have some, some uh, more experts in this area. Yeah, thank you. Um, hi, installer maintainer here, uh, jumping in. We run the, we do use Puppet, but we use it agentless. So you use Puppet apply, you have Puppet agent as a package installed, but it's not a daemon that's constantly running. So you do use it also to upgrade and uh, after that. So you have it in place, but it's not constantly managed your systems. Was it clarified? Anything else? No, people are too tired. <laughs> Thank you.